I'm, my name is Kyle Waters. I work for Venture Data LLC, where I am the lead software architect. That's just a title I made up for myself because there's only two of us, so I got a, had a pretty free reign. Uh, I do pretty much everything there. I have PHP development, Perl development, Java development, JavaScript, uh, IT work. Uh, yeah, for, there's two of us who do all the IT and development for, well, yeah, at least most of it for 600 plus organization. We run call centers. We have uh, four locations. Uh, we do, our call centers do public opinion polling, so we're the ones calling you and asking you a bunch of questions. <clears throat> I actually started, you, I'd seen regular expressions before, I'd seen someone do a presentation on it, but it wasn't actually, it was soon after I started my job I ran into a situation like, I, I should look those up again, <laughs> that, this might be useful, and I finally started using them hands on. And I'm like, wow, I wish I'd learned this years before. I can't, I don't know how, much, how many times I went through and <clears throat> changed something by hand when I could have been doing it uh, with regular expressions. So has everyone here used regular expressions already? Is this just gonna be a kind of a quick, okay. That's what I thought. Um, I think uh, I've done this presentation in front of two people who have never used regular expressions. One of those was my wife. And so, first time I did it, I think there were 100 people in the room, it was at Open West, and I got one guy who said he'd never used regular expressions. Yeah. Good, thanks for coming, okay. So if you want to, oh, I was gonna, um, you can pull up uh, a text editor and try some of these out. Uh, I'll, I'll be doing them on screen and we can try some different things if you have any questions. What I should have done, I realized right before, before I came was like, was, who was here for that equals doesn't equals quiz? Yeah, a few of you. Yeah, I should have done like that, a really hard, reg, what does this regex do? And <laughs> see if everyone can figure it out. Okay, so um, regular expressions, I think you already know, are for, they're kind of like advanced search and replace. They allow you to match patterns within text so you can search for things where it's not always consistent. Um, and you can also do replacements where it's not always consistent. So we have a couple of special matching characters. So we'll start off with uh, one of the most common, which is slash W, which will match any word character. So which includes numbers. So lowercase a through Z, uppercase a through Z, and zero through nine. So a quick show of how that works. Um, everything, hi everything highlighted counts. You can see, yeah, the letters, the numbers, not the apostrophes, not the dashes, not the periods, not the spaces. We also have the dash D, which is for digit, which only matches zero through nine. And then we have the special period character, which matches everything. So space, periods, numbers, letters, it matches it all. Okay, so then we also have some special characters that allow us to say, only match if it's at the beginning of the line or only match if it's at the end of a line. So. So I put the backslash in front of the period because I actually want to match a period and not just anything that comes after the digit. So this should only match digits at the beginning of the line. So, and it's only going to match ones that have a period right after it. If I take that off. We do, yeah. You're, you're kind of oh, yeah, let's, yeah, that's a really important part of it is all on the left there. <laughs> so let's fix that. I'll move this over here because we don't need the first part. Yeah, we don't need the first part of that. Okay, uh, so, thanks. Yeah, there we're only matching the ones at the first of the line. We're not matching this 13 here because it's got a space in front of it. Sorry, when I move around, I don't 
know if I'm getting picked up by the mic or not. <laughs> oh yeah, and then dollar sign is the same thing at the end of the line. So we can do slash period, dollar sign. And we don't match this period right here because it's not at the end of the line, but we match all those. Okay, yeah, one of the things I probably, well, yeah, important thing when you're doing search and replace is the callback ability. So you can use parentheses to store a match and insert it back in later. Slash one. So the slash one says ref reference the first match that's inside the parentheses. And so I'm going to match all of those. And when I push replace all, now it's added a space. It inserted those back in and put a space behind them. Any questions about that? We've all done this before. <laughs> okay, then we got our repeaters. We have star, plus, and question mark that allow us to match, uh, say, match the, they modify the preceding character and say match it this many times. So star is zero or more, plus is one or more, and question mark is uh, zero or one time. So now this time, instead of just matching those, the 1 through 9, we match 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17. We don't match 13 because it's not at the start of the line. There's that space there. And we don't match 10 because it doesn't have a period. Now if I do that, we now match 13. And we still match the others because there doesn't have to be a space because the star will still match whether it's there or not, zero or more. And we can change that to a plus. Oh, yeah, it's matching the one from the previous line. G edit does multi line by default. Okay, then we can do the question mark here. And now it matches 10 because the period doesn't have to be there because it's zero or one. Okay, you can use the square braces to do an either or. So I can say I want to match either a, yeah, a word character or a space character. And so then it matches my, and then if I do it this way, It'll match through that whole, that whole line to the period, from the dash to the period. We can also do ranges within that. So I want to, one through three. I have a log file I have to look through all the time, so I use grep with the regular expressions. And there's certain log lines, that they're, they're numbered. And so this is really useful, I use that all the time. So. I'm not matching the four, five, or six, but I am the one, two, three, and the 11, and the one there.
something, you can do something like that. Okay. Okay. And if you want to match words or strings instead of just characters, you can use the pipe. Anyone else read Wheel of Time? I finished it right before I did put this presentation together. So. I did, all, in two years, <laughs> all 15 books. There we go. So there we find, yeah, brown, green, red, red. Say, I only want it if there's a space, and then it's referencing an aha, aja. I was never sure how to pronounce anything. Oh. Oh. Yes, you can. And how you do that is, uh, de is implementation dependent. So if you're doing it like in a text editor like this, you just do it right here. Uh, if you're doing it in PHP, here you're going to be using, yeah, you can't see that, doing preg replace. And so you'd be doing something like, uh, and here's where you do your replacement. No, you actually, you, you put it here, don't you? Right there? Yeah. Yeah, for instance, to say you want it to be insensitive. By default, it is case sensitive. So, I for insensitive. And yeah, with Perl, it's the same way. This part's, you're not doing, well, yeah, you're using the S operator, but you do the slash I, so. Okay, any other questions? I got a question, yes. Okay. <laughs> no, actually this one, let's do a, let's do the example first this time. Okay, can everyone see that? So, what's that gonna do? It's going to match a dash, then anything that comes after the dash, if anything comes after the dash, through until it comes to an actual literal period, right? Yeah, Steve, Steve is correct, I am wrong. That is not how it's gonna work. And right here on line 10 is the example where it's wrong. Uh, so it actually goes to the last period on the line. Right. Well, what I said was wrong. I said the next period. So I, my description was wrong. But like he said, it's what we call greedy. And so it, it matches as much as possible. If that's not the behavior you want, you put a question mark right after the star. See, this stuff's so simple and intuitive, right? <laughs> and uh, now you can see it. Uh, it it only matches that first sentence. Okay, I got some other fun examples. Actually, I should have them in there somewhere. Oh, no, history doesn't go back that far. Okay. Space, so it'll be tab, yeah, white, it'll be tab or space bar, and sometimes carriage return. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, good. That part I remembered. Okay. So, what's it going to do? Yeah. Yes, this is very true. Because <laughs> you can never replace me because who can read? Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it is, so I'm looking for the start of a line. There may or may not be space. There must be a digit. There may or may not be a period. Uh, there must be space. Yeah, at least one space. I'm not sure I want that. I'm going to change that to a star. And then any amount of spaces and words. Ooh, this will not quite do what I want it to do. One or more spaces or words? Yes. One or more spaces or words after that space. So. So it put anchor tags around my names. Although not, not, not all of them, because I didn't account for the apostrophe. So you can probably need. Yeah, right. So slash one calls back the digit and the period, and then the slash two is going to call back the name. There we go. Now it's actually now it uh, handles the apostrophe. Oh, actually, the, the, yeah, this other one's really, let me do. Okay, so greater than sign, which isn't meant to be anything special. I just actually want to match that greater than sign I just added. And... Uh, None of us build websites this way anymore, right? We just load it all into a database. No, oh, I hit the wrong key. There we go. There, I created my link quickly. Okay, let's see if this will. I'm not sure that this will work in gedit. Oh, I yeah, turned that on. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Oh, whoops, I forgot to match the aja. <laughs> but it uh what it did was it lowercased it. So you can do a slash L in front of the callback or a slash U, depending on what you want to do. Another thing that's really useful in grepping log files as well as email validation is you can specify a number of repeats. So it will match three letters in a row in that case. You can say I want to match three, be anything between three and five. 
Oh, maybe that doesn't work on this one. Or only three and five. Oh, that, that does it between three and five. Yeah, with the comma. Uh, there, if you want to say, I want to match everything that's not an R, you can do inside the square brackets again, caret, and we match everything that's not an R. Okay, and now one of the most useful things, um, I don't use this very often, I have to look it up every time. Uh, I use it, but it has been a real lifesaver in some situations. Oh. So this is called look ahead. So what I'm saying is find every H that doesn't have a period after it. Now, one of the key differences between this and the one we just did is this doesn't, notice it doesn't highlight the character that's after it. So if I do it this way, notice it highlights the E after it, but when you do the look ahead, that doesn't actually count as part of the match. So what if I want it to be only when it's, and in that case, I'm only going to match the H when there is a period after it. So it's equals versus an exclamation mark. Fairly common uh, syntax. So, and then you also have the look behind, which is the same thing, but uh, of course on the left instead of the right. Yeah, and I think that was supposed to be there for to actually match the period. <laughs> There's no colon. Let's see here, let's do something simpler. Let's actually just go back to the... So there we match every H that has a T in front of it. But like this one that has an A, we don't match. And again, we can just change that to an exclamation mark. And we do the opposite. So uh, any questions? So there's a lot of different places where you see this come up. A text editor, like I was using, most text editors will support it, where most word processors support it. Now most programming languages support it. You can even get it in C++ through various libraries. Uh, I use it all the time in grep and sed for IT work. Uh, Faker, which is a tool in PHP to generate random data. You, like you need to uh, generate a social security number um, you can you do you can actually write like a regular expression to do that. Yeah. What do you think of regex databases? Uh, like in the like in the query. Yeah. Uh, I I use it when it's <laughs> useful. <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually written it into code. If you're writing, to, but there's definitely been times I've needed it in. Uh, database query. Oh, by default, you're using the regular expressions. I don't do Mongo, but I write the, the words 
Oh. <laughs> Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I've with uh, Postgres it's supported, and I've used it at times. Most of the time, I can get away with just their uh, like matching, or their yeah, the built the other the uh, simpler pattern matching. But yeah, I that's interesting because it's not the most efficient way to match things. <laughs> but I could see that with a less structured database, though, having to use it more often. And uh, oh yeah, I use it and even use it with uh, Salt, which is an automate tool for automated uh, run configuring and running Linux machines. But when I need to tell it, when I need to replace something in a file, sometimes I have to update a configuration file, and I need part of it to be unique, so I can't just replace the whole file. So I need to tell it to go in and re just replace part of it. And there's a regular expression for doing that. Or yeah, there's a tool for using regular expressions and doing that. All right, well, that is all, yeah. So that's not. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> No, not the hash, no. This is a, uh, yeah, provisioning tool. So if you have, I have like 350 Linux machines. And so when I have to update a configuration file on them, I just go in and I can set a regex, run the command for the ones I want to update, which I think also, that might use just Unix pattern matching, but, and then it uh, updates the, the config file in all 350 or whichever ones I told it to update. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, well, one of, the, of course, one of the things, like it was what was brought, kind of brought up earlier, I, my rule of thumb is always, when my professor said, a successful software project is one that comes in on time and under budget. And so you're always, I'm always thinking, when I come back in five years from now, what's going to be the easiest for me um, or someone else? Um, <laughs> did you have something? Yeah, you're, it's not regex. <laughs> for me, it might be, but I could see it not being for someone else. In the queries? No. Oh. The ones, the three that weren't in its provision, two of them were regular expressions. Causing performance problems on the website. Performance of using regular expressions. Give regular. Well, I was using them, they were, they basically built a template engine, and they were using regular expressions to go through and replace stuff on the other page. <laughs> sure do that. And the other one was doing some kind of keyword matching in the wasn't well thought out. Yeah, they, they, they are inefficient. They can be very hard to read, like some of the stuff we put up there. Um, so it, it is something to be avoided. I, I, th I think that with uh, PHP, wasn't there some stuff they were phasing out in favor of the preg functions? Oh, the E-reg, so, but it's still regular expression, uh, yeah. Was, so there's, I think you, you were pretty much talking about the PCRE. Yeah. Right? So for open kind of regular expressions. Yeah. There's basic and extended regular expressions as well. 
basic you should never ever use for any reason. But that's the default of bin. So just so you know, you can change the default of bin, but that is the default. Um, and I recommend that you change your bin marker. If you use bin, change your bin RC to um, change the how it does the searching. Um, now you've said your regular expressions or so Pro writer expressions are kind of an extension of the center writer yeah. expressions. So most of the same stuff will work with um, some of the more advanced stuff. Pro writer expressions go really crazy. Pro, there's, a, there's a CPAN module. I can't remember what it's called. It's written by. It's a regular expression debugger that is itself just one giant regular expression. <laughs> but in Pro, you can do callbacks to yeah. Pro code within your regular expression, so that's kind of how it works. But it's just like a giant regular expression with callbacks to stuff. It's actually really useful. It'll show you how the reg like it'll step through your regular expression and matching something and show you where it failed if it's not. If you're having trouble with your regular expression that you think should match something, it'll show you where it failed along the way. You'll be able to see oh, nice. it's trying this, it's trying that, it's backtracking here, going through again, trying these different things. Exactly where it fails. <laughs> so, so I guess I'd, I'd say it. Regular expressions probably should be the last resort because it fails on both the readability and the optimization. <laughs> it's one of the slowest ways to do it and one of the hardest to read. Yeah. You know, uh, really, I think one of the, the best places to use regular expressions is when you know what the string should look like, but you don't know what it is. Yeah. And, and I, I see a lot of times when people know what the string is, like with the simple replace, yeah. you actually know what it is you're looking for, and they'll use regular expressions anyway, and, and that's not a great use for it. But if you know the, the shape uh, of the string without knowing the exact nature of it, then uh, there's not much else you can do. Um, and uh, you know, that could be, they're often used for things like an email address. Yeah. Most of the ones you'll see out there aren't actually good. Yeah. Actual regular expression for email addresses, it's about a page long. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. <laughs> you should always use, but you should always use it with PHP built in function that will tell you it's about email addresses, <laughs> which is backed by that regular expression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. right, use the pre existing function whenever okay. possible. But of course, in validation. Right. It's well. It's exactly like each is saying. You don't know what the content is, but you often know exactly what it. You know. You know what a phone number should look like. You know what a. And it's good for validation. I know what it should look like. International or. <laughs> I I use it to strip. No, I don't have to deal with international. I only have to deal with U.S. And I just strip out the. <laughs> the stuff I don't want. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah. You would be wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, right, that's, that's the number one thing about regex is, is whatever you've written is wrong. <laughs> Even if it does everything right, it's wrong. Yeah. yeah, it's always better to do a pre built library when you can. Yeah. So um, I go to Utah.js as well. Anytime regex comes up, it's usually more basically because of the new. I used it way more back in the past. Um, I love, nowadays, I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's
Yeah. Well, they're not, they're not readable, is what is the biggest issue. They're not, you know, they, 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 they are for people who have used Redmix a lot, but if you haven't, then it gets to be, um, you know, it's, it, it just looks like garbage. Like yeah. It just looks like somebody yeah. just randomly was, uh, well, so but they're actually so <laughs> Could be the reason your tests are failing. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, that's prob one, probably the most common use for me as well. Is <laughs> so, oh yeah, Steve. <laughs> the the two pro the one pro problem, yeah, uh, yeah. If you have a problem and you think regex is the solution, now you have two problems. That one. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, I didn't set it up. I was going to show the XKCD one. Every time I learn something new, I imagine myself saving the world with it. Get out of the way. I know regular expressions. All right, well, I guess that's it. Thank you.